Yo, welcome back to financial accounting in this section we are looking at control account so if you are new on this channel please consider to subscribe like and share this lobby premium consult so thank you so let's go into financial account and under control account so you're looking at control account in this case so let's look at our learning objectives as we always used to do so these are our learning objectives you need to understand the nature, the scope, and purpose of contract account, the mean of contract account, divisions of ledgers, classification of contract account, advantages or reasons for the operation of contract account, and then finally summary to everything about control account. So let's take note of that. So let's begin with the nature, scope, and the purpose of control account. So this is what we are saying. The chance of errors occurring in a double entry accounting now unfortunately is what two. Why are we saying that? We are saying that the, the chance or the likelihood that an error will occur in our books are two. And what are these two? That is either a wrong debit or what a wrong what credit. These are the chances upon which errors can occur in our books. Okay. Either there is a wrong debit or what a wrong credit. In that the next point is that given the need for producing accurate and up-to-date what information so once we know that th there's there is a there's a chance that an error will occur it will guide us as to how to go by and produce an accurate and up-to-date what information of what data all right so if even if we fail not to even to produce accurate and up-to-date information it is still important that if errors are made in a boost they can be located what quickly all right so even if you're able to we couldn't able to meet the standard of producing accurate and up-to-date information even if when the errors occur we should be able to locate the errors what quickly and how do we do that let's continue a trial balance will show the existence of what arithmetic errors remember when we started with the introductory part when we started with the day boost preparation of trial balance we say trial balance is a list of all balances existing in the boost of account and it shows the arithmetic accuracies of our transactions. Alright, trial balance will show the existence of arithmetic errors in the ledger account. However, it becomes very difficult for the trial balance to locate these errors. Right? So, however, locating these errors may be still very time consuming. Even if we can locate it, it may be still be very time consuming because it will get to the stage where the business has grown to a certain size and using a trial balance might be a waste of our time. So the business needs to identify other methods that they think it will help them to locate errors quickly if those errors occur, all right? So that is when your control system so we will come, we will get to that end. So however, locating these errors may be still very time consuming once the business has passed beyond certain size. So that's what we wanted to make here. Therefore, it is useful to have other methods of locating errors, as I was saying. So once the business has passed through certain size and has grown to certain size, and using a trial balance may be time consuming and very difficult for you to extract all the errors, then there is a limitation of using the trial balance when the business gets to a certain level of growth in its or operation. So in that, when there is errors, it becomes very difficult for has to go through them in that slow pace to identify as we are going to to what very time because when are using the trial balance but then it is useful to have other methods of locating errors and once such method is true there is a construction of what control accounts so all that all that we are seeing here and there here we are, we are talking about control account so control account in a sense that it is an account that comes in to actually locate errors quickly because at certain stages in the life of the business, it may be difficult for them to use the trial balance to locate errors. Once it's okay. So control accounts will come in when the business reaches a certain level. And currently, we just use what the software to make these words recording. The manual ones are out of date. Well, the manual ones just use it for the purpose of what understanding and teaching. But then when it comes to practical side of it, we just use the software to and I take those sorts of activities for us to know whether there is an error 
or not and to know whether all the information you have entered in the individual account to reflect in the control account so once such method is true there is a construction for contract so what is then a control account so control accounts are accounts prepared by a responsible what official please take note it's an account that is prepared by what a responsible official to serve as a cross check for the leisure accounts here we mean the individual leisure accounts that is debtors, creditors, personal account. Here we mean the personal account, debtors and creditors. Okay, by acting as a trial balance for the individual ledgers. Go around the day when we are using the trial balance, when you prepare, you realize that the debit and the credit side words agree. So once they agree, the understanding or the emphasis here is that all the errors has been very, it has been properly entered. But then there might be certain errors in there. As you know, we have errors that won't affect the agreement of the trial balance. They also have other errors. So, the fact that the trial balance will agree doesn't mean that all the errors has been properly what revealed and then corrected. No, there might be certain possible errors. And because the trial balance cannot reveal such error, that's where the control accounts will come into actual locate those possible errors. Please, I hope you are getting what I'm saying. Good. So, contract accounts and account prepared by what a responsible official to serve as a cross check. So, it serve, it serve as a, a reference to the ledger account by ensuring that the figures or the balances in the individual account will be the same thing in the control account for the individual what ledger account. All right. So that is a whole issue about control accounts. It's an account prepared by a responsible official to serve as a cross check for leisure accounts, for leisure accounts by acting as a trial balance for the individual ledgers, as I was saying. So it has a trial balance to serve as a cross check. So once the control account agrees, then meaning that all the individual items that we entered, debtors and creditors balance, all the entries that we made into those accounts are very true and what correct. That is how control accounts comes into work in that case. So let's take note of that. So that is control accounts are used to provide a check. That is control accounts are used to provide a check. Used to provide a check on the personal ledger account, as I was saying, to ensure that all the items that we enter in the personal account is in line with whatever is in the control account. So it's an account that keeps a total record for all collective item that comprises a number of similar but what individual what account yes so you can see here that it talks about aggregation of all the individual informations or items in the individual accounts right that's how control account it houses all the individual what informations with respect to individual ledgers that's how control account functions so it's an account that keeps total record for a collective items that comprises a number of similar but what individual what account so a number of select for example let's say if i take bank as one of the items that control account actually work on so let's say i paid a check to let's say i said i pay a check i receive a check from let's say ama kofi kojo they are all our debtors right so they are using our check to pay us so in that regard, if I want to get the total check that I receive from my debtors, it will be the aggregation of what? The check from Ama, the check from Kojo, and the check from what? Kofi. When I put it, all of the three together and I place in the control account, that is where we get to know the total checks that I receive for that period. So that is what the control account is trying to tell us here. That is an account that keeps a total record for collective items, like the check that we're using. That comprises a number of similar but what individual accounts. So that is another thing that we need to take into account when it comes to control. So when it comes to control account, all that we'll be doing here is to add the similar items in the individual account and put them as one, then we paste them in the control. So if they are the debit side, then we paste it at the debit side of control. If you are the credit side, then you put it at the debit side or post it at the credit side of the control account. So that is the general thing we're going to look out for in the control account. So let's take note of that. Then they add more ideas or information about contract account. So in that contract account is also called what we can have 
of the alternative new contract account. We can call it what a master account. Master account in the sense that it's an account that houses what a collective and smaller what account and makes it as what one. That's why it makes it what a master account. A memorandum account in the sense that the figures that you actually pick, if we have done a summary of all the ledger, you just take the item, then you paste it in the control, just pick it and you paste, just pick it and you post like copy and paste. So once you pick the item, you paste it in the control, if you're a debit side, you paste it at the debit side, if you're at the credit side, then you paste from the individual account. That's why it makes it what a memorandum. So the figures are just, you pick, you pick them like that, then you post them, you pick them, you post them. That makes it what a memorandum. At the end of the day, we are saying a contract can serve as well, a cross check on the individual with leisure account. So it becomes a self balancing with leisure. So at the end of the day, contract account, if you are preparing them from the original transaction information and you, you prepare the individual accounts before you use the individual accounts to prepare the control, at the end of the day, we expect that the balance that exists in individual account, when you pull them together, it will be the same thing that will be in the control account, whether it's for the debtors or what creditors. So let's take note of that. So in there, you can call it self-balancing ledger or a total what account because it, it talks about aggregation of similar items, right? In the individual account that we place in the control account. So you can call the control account as what? A master account, memorandum, self-balancing ledger or a total account. This is because the ledgers which have control accounts systems are provided to be correct as we were saying as far as the double entry account is concerned so you have this that's the sales ledger and then the purchase ledger so basically ledgers are going to talk about here in this case are the sales and the purchase ledger so as we move along then you see them that is that what you actually want to talk about in this case so let's move on to divisions of ledger so generally it's not part of this series of Stories you're having, but then I think it's worthwhile for you to also have a fair knowledge about the types or the divisions of ledger that we have in the books of accounts. So let's go through them real quick. Generally, there are five basic divisions of ledger account, and they are the sales or debtors ledger, purchase, bought or creditors ledger. You have the general and personal ledger. You have the cash book or payments and receipts ledger. You have the private or owners ledger. Sales or purchase ledger, real quick. We use it, sales or debtors ledger, we use it to record what all information about debtors, those that we actually sell goods to them on credit. All information about them is always found in the sales or debtors ledger control. Then it comes to purchases, it's also obscene to the debtors. So all information is about our creditors, that they also supply goods to us on credit terms. All information, all information about them. Can be found in the purchases bought or the creditors ledger control account when it comes to general or impersonal ledger a deal with information cannot be found in the two above that's why we call it what impersonal so we can call the sales and the purchase ledger as personal account or individual account but then all information cannot be found in these personal accounts are found in the impersonal ledger which is a general ledger and a general ledger is also because because it requires information that are not personal in nature, it deals with mostly in real and nominal what account. Real in the sense that it deals with what, tangible assets like buildings, fishes and fitting equipment. These are what we call real accounts. But then the nominal account will be accounts of what recurrent expenditure and what revenue, like discount received, rent paid. That's rent as an expense, discount receive as revenue. That's where the nominal account comes. So the, if you want to get the ledgers under the general and personal, like you have the real and then the nominal account. Real for tangible assets, like plants and machinery, equipment and those stuff. But then the nominal is for recurrent revenue and what? Recurrent expenditure. That happens within one accounting period. So Let's take note of that. That is the 12 month calendar. Then we have cash book, as you know already. Cash book for receipts and payment in terms of cash and what? Check or bank. Then we have private or owner's ledger that records information about what? The owners of the business in that case. So let's take note of that. So another note this. However, the ledger is divided for 
So the reason why we do this ledger division is for one, for control purposes, two, for preparation of interim accounts, etc. For control purposes, we are doing here. We have us to know those items that are of personal in nature, and then we can use the control account as we're dealing with to add as a cost check to know that whether all the items that we entered has been properly entered and what actually what reflect all the figures that we actually so that is one thing then for creation of interim accounts also those accounts that are also of importance to the business so these are the reasons why we actually prepare divide ledgers into their various what divisions for control purposes and preparation of what interim account we have a number of them you can look at them later on so generally these are the classifications or types of contract account we have basically two that's the sales ledger contract account and then purchase ledger. and i think we have talked about these indirectly from the introductory part of the contract account so the sales ledger contract account is an account that deal with the collective individual items of debtors right right so we deal with the aggregation or the collective of all the individual items so all the individual items about their test can be found in the sales ledger contract account so that is that so this so in other words give a summary to all the individual informations who are debtors to the business so this is a summary of all individual and ent ent entry made in the sales ledger or the de or debtors account yes that are the totals of all the items debited to the debtors account are debited to this account as i was saying and once that we credit so what they're trying to say is that if every information is debited in the individual account when it comes to the control you debit it if it is credited you credit it in the control so that is the general thing you need to understand so in that you can look for the following some of the items that will be appearing in the sales ledger contract and so you have credit sales you have the sanet check you have interest on overdue debt is also another one so if they are the test owner then they are expected to pay for a particular period they feel all the interest penalties that we need to actually charge and we remit to them then then you actually pay for it so in that case so we're going to have interest on overdue debts then you have cash refund correction of errors if there is any error so this will be at the debit side take note and at the credit side you see cash or check received from debtors here are the one paying is going to be credited discounts allowed special allowances returning was bad debts return of bill receivables contra entry and then correction of if there is any error so as you can see their source that the as will actually come from where you can get this information and that's where their sources are actually our sales general cash we can do so and so this is we did it in the generous when we're doing the debut so i don't want to bother much on that so this is the format for the sales ledger control account as you can see you have the opening balance if the balance at the debit you record it at the debit side if you have credit balance to find you also record then the credit sales discount allowed this net check or the net bill receivables and those stuff bad debt recovered refund and those stuff and one thing else we need to take into account here is that we have what we call what contra entry or set off generally when you hear of contra entry between two ledgers in this case sales ledger and the purchase as we were discussing the tone anytime there is a contra entry what they are trying to say is that a set off or the contra entry is a means by which organization use part of what a debtor's balance to settle off or to set or pay the amount that it owns what it creditors so it's a means of reducing the eight credit eight creditors what balance that he owns them by actually uh reducing or finding part of the amount that you want to reduce a credit balance by charging against the sales ledger control so this is what i'm trying to say the set of is a means by which we try to cancel off part of the business debt and settle it against the business receivables so here anytime you head of contra entry all that you need to do in general contra entry meaning that 
we want to reduce part of the business debt that is on is credited so if we want to reduce it we use part of our debtors with our own owners then we use it as a means as if the debtors has make a payment to us so we credit our sales ledger then we go and debit our purchases ledger so that is how we do the contra entry or the setup but then at times they may also give you that let's say transfer at times they may say that transfer they might say let's say debit transfer from the bot ledger to the sales ledger you and i know that when it comes to contract and we are saying that all items the individual account which are debit side is being debited in it is being debited in the that contract and if, if that, that that item is also at the credit side of the individual account it's also being credited in the contract account. so here if they actually there's a question that will tell you that a debit balance from the bot ledger to the sales ledger what are you going to do you're going to going to apply the same principle meaning that the balance exists at the debit side of what the bot ledger the purchase ledger and they want you to transfer to the debit side of what they say so once you hear the debit balance in the bot ledger transfer to the sales ledger meaning that it is coming to the debit side of what the sales ledger all right then also if you heard of credit transfer let's say from the same bot ledger to the sales ledger too meaning that it's also coming from the credit side of the what the purchase ledger and is tra being transferred to the credit side of what the sales ledger these are the exceptional cases this is how you need to do so once it is at the credit side of the bot ledger and coming to the credit side of the sales ledger the corresponding entry will happen at the debit side of the purchase ledger because i guess what i'm saying and if it was at the debit side from the bot ledger to the sales ledger then the corresponding entry will happen in the credit side of the bot ledger likewise if the item is coming from i'm treating the book so once we get to the purchase ledger we can just go off like that but if the balance is coming from the debit side of what the sales ledger control transfer to the credit so transfer to the bot ledger then that one to the same principle you take the debit balance in the sales ledger and bring it to the debit side of for the purchase ledger and then corresponding entry will be at the credit side of the sales ledger but then if it's a credit balance in the sales ledger transferred to the purchase ledger then it means that it's coming to the credit side of the purchase ledger and then the corresponding entry will happen is at the debit side of the sales ledger so when there is these exceptional cases we apply the rule where all individual account that we have if you want to enter the contract account if they are the debit you enter the debit if you are the credit you enter the credit so these are the exceptional cases where there is a transfer but they generally if they say contract entry or set off all that you need to do here is that you are using part of our debtors balance to settle for the amount that the business owe and that is how account those also work so that one we just credit the sales ledger then we debit the purchase ledger in that case and the exceptional case to works when you are using the principle if the debit side of let's say the sales ledger and you are transferred to the purchase ledger you paste it at the debit side of the purchase ledger and the corresponding entry happens at the sales ledger and the OCT is true whether it's for purchases or for sales so let's take note of that it's very very important that we do and as i think we have treated we have given a summary to the transfers here as you look at it, you can clearly understand as i was saying so that is the whole deal when it comes to transfer and the general set of all the contract entry in that case so let's take note of that so these are the things you also need to know when it comes to contract account so we have cash sales provision for bad debts and double debt provision on discount allowed trade discount carriage out was these items are not entered in the sales ledger they are not passed so anytime you see cash sales provision for bad debt and therefore the provision on discount allow trade discount and carriage out was they are not part of the sales list so don't enter them at all they are just irrelevant information don't bring it in once you bring it in you get the question wrong so take note of that and point two any item that increases the debtors balance 
is debited to the sales ledger control account. So he's giving the general idea about how the control account system works. We are saying that any item that will increase the test balance, it is debited. But any item that will reduce their balance is what credited. So take note of this. These are just the tricks to help you to appreciate the control account system very much more better. So any item that will increase the test balance, we debit it. Any item that will decrease you credit the debtors or sales ledger control account so take note of that then we come to the purchase ledger control account a brother to the sales ledger for the purchase ledger we are talking about our supplies so it give a summarized information about all our creditors that we have in the business individual creditors the aggregation of all individual creditors that we have and give me place in the purchase ledger so at the end of the day all the items in the individual account if you are the debit side of the individual creditors we debit it in the purchase ledger if they are the credit side we also want credit it in that case so that's the summary of all entries that we are actually talking about in that in that regard so these are the items that will likely to be found in the purchase ledger control looking at the debit side we have purchase returns we have purchase returns Purchase returns, this I'm talking about, purchase returns, and you have cash or check to be paid to credit. You have the discount receipt, sorry. We have special allowances. So we have special allowance, as I was saying. We have bill payable. We have contra entry or set of, we have, I think I've explained more in the sales ledger. Then we come to the credit side, you have credit purchases, cash refund, bills payable, the Senate, then correction of errors, we are likely. And these are the various sources where we can get this information from in that case. So each item can read it on. So then these are the formats for the purchase ledger control account. If there's any opening balances as well, you record whether it's a debit or the credit side, you record them in that case. Then return out was or be at the debit side. Return out was discount receive cash or check paid to creditors, bill payable, set of as I was saying, using part of our debtors balance to make payments or purchase or account to debit and then sales ledger will be credited. And then we have credit purchases, this annet bill payable. So once we made a payment to them, it was debited. So if it was this annet, then they credit it. Then it will increase our indebtedness. Then we have interest on bill payable. Then you have cash refund from creditors, then noting charges and those stuff. So these are the formats and items that goes into the purchase ledger control account. So let's take note of that. It's very, very important that you know. You know, so all information about creditors will be in the purchase ledger control. All information about creditors will be in the purchase ledger control. So let's take note of that. So if that information does not relate to purchases credit purchases then don't bring it here if it doesn't relate to credit purchase then please don't bring it here once you bring it here you make you get your answer wrong so let's take note of that so as we were saying in the that of the uh when we are the sales ledger we know that there are certain items that shouldn't be found in the contract account in the sales. And I think we discussed all these other things. Then you also made emphatically that if any item will increase, if there is increase in debtors balance, it's actually what debited. And if there is decrease, we credit it. Likewise, is so for the purchases. If there is any item, if there is an increase, sorry, in the creditors balance or the purchase ledger, we credit it. But if there is any item or there is a decrease in the creditors balance to we debit it. So these are the two extremes that we need to take into account when it comes to control accounts in relation to purchases. Right. So any item that increase creditors balance is credited. And any item that reduce creditors balance is what debited to the purchase ledger control. And these are the things you also need to know. When you have prime purchase ledger control account, this item shouldn't be found in there. We have cash purchases, you have uh carriage in wars, you have provision on credit, creditors for discount receive. These items shouldn't be found in the purchase ledger control. Cash purchases, 
carries in what's provision on creditors or discount receive and those one. So anything about cash purchases or cash sales wouldn't be part in the contract account. Anything about carriage wouldn't be part in the contract account. Anything about provision wouldn't be part in the contract account in general terms. But then we have their classifications in that case. So let's take note of that. So if you have any question, comment below in the comment section. I'll give you a response to that. So these are the things that you need to understand when it comes to control accounts. All right, so let's move on to... So these are a number of advantages or reasons for the preparation of contract accounts. One of them is that it saves time. As you can remember, when a business has grown to a certain size and you can't very quickly use a trial balance to locate errors and very time consuming, the trial balance will waste a whole lot of time. But when you use a contract account, it saves time. It doesn't make you waste a lot of time. It can it helps you save that you can use the other time for other stars. All right. So one advantage is that it saves your time. It helps in locating errors. That's another advantage. You can easily locate errors as and when it occurs. Then it serves as a check on the work performed by what the account click. So if there is any flood and embezzlement, the contract account will be revealed. Since that one going to prepare is someone who is who has an in-depth knowledge about the preparation. That is called the responsible official. He has in-depth knowledge about the preparation of control. So once you do that, then you see that. There was for the embezzlement, it will easily show them they can actually take corrective measures against the accounts clerk who actually made preparation with respect to other accounts. It also shows that arithmetic accuracy of individual accounts as it as a trial as it acts as a trial balance, as you already know. It acts as a cross check on the individual account to ensure that all the items you have entered in the account reflect whatever is in the control account. All right, it also shows the balance due on the account to which it refers exactly. It also shows so if we have the test account in your test account, then we want to know the balance when you have the test account. The control account, when you prepare the control account, it will give us the total for the balance that exists in the in this individual account. That's why it says it shows the balance due on the account to which it refers. So if it refers to the debtor's balance, then we can get it from the sales ledger control. If it refers to the creditor's balance, then we can get it from there creditors leisure control account then also it help us to ascertain the sales and purchases values where they are omitted yes especially when you are preparing the final account especially in complete your course it is through the control account where you can extract the sales and purchases what figures or values that we can use actually in the preparation of our final account so it's very very important when you understand control account and use it in other areas of what application is very very important so let's take note so these are a number of reasons or advantages why we engage in the preparation of what contract it saves time it helps in locating errors it serves as a check on the work performed by the accounts like it shows arithmetic accuracies of individual accounts it shows the balances due on the account which it refers and it helps to ascertain the sales and purchases values where they are out omitted and these are a number of them that we can actually talk about so once again, I say thanks for watching this video. If you have any questions, just put it below in the comment section. I'll give a response. So thank you once again for watching this video. If the video was helpful to you, please consider to subscribe, like, and share. And let's reach as many students as possible so that we can engage on this platform and have this interactive discussion as we move on in a subsequent video. So I'll see you in the next video where we discuss other matters in relation to control account. And please remember, this is the first or section for control account is the first part of the control account. In this section, we are going to look at various how we can apply the principle that we have learned the control account in a practical sense. Okay, so we're going to take through some practical questions about the control account. Then we use the principle of plenty and then we apply them in that case. So thanks you once again. I'll see you in the next video where we discuss practical questions on control account. Have a wonderful day. Bye bye.